Hello everyone and I hope um, you're well. Uh, I'm recording this video to look at the uh, what is required for the first assessment. Um, it's a scholarly paper on the principles of assessment and it's due on the 6th of April. Uh, it is 2,000 words um, and due back on the 30th. Now what we're asking you to do in this assessment is effectively we're asking you as you can see on the screen that we are getting you to do a search we want you to identify discuss and analyze the principles of assessment used in clinical education okay now for those of you who already saw Sino and PubMed and went oh whoa what's that because I know some of you were in your first subject um, or only second subject. Tim Eggleston has put a video um, into his uh, record the video and you'll be able to access that from the uh, recorded online meeting tab um, in the interact where you've just above where this video has been linked. Um, so go and have a look at that and if you're still worried put your ask your question to Tim on the library forum that's in your general forum he'll answer any questions there now uh, so we want you to do an assessment uh, of clinical tools but we want you to do this in sort of a stepwise fashion first of all uh, we want this assignments asking you to have a look at the literature surrounding clinical assessment you then need to uh, identify so what's the important things here I identify discuss and analyze the principles of assessment used in clinical education so they're important words to pick up on um, you then you're going to examine and discuss the principles of formative assessment. So to do that, you may um, look down here and you'll go, well, actually, before I discuss the principles, I need to define and discuss what these actually are, and then go on to discuss the principles of formative and summative assessment. Um, and you're really looking to look at at the for, formative and summative assessments relationship or link to clinical practice what is the value of using these types of assessment in clinical practice what does the student get out of it what does the assessor get out of it what does the teacher get out of it why are each valuable in their own way and that's what that first ta part of the task is asking you to do. Then, as part of your search, you are being asked to find and critically evaluate the assessment tools. Um, that, and and you, depending on your health profession, it may be uh, an assessment of a, of. Um, a client's ability to swallow if you're a speech thera um, therapist it might be a particular technique of caring for you know caring for a person who has diabetes and cutting their nails if you're a podiatrist it may be inserting a cannula if you're a registered nurse so please use assessment tools and checklists that you find so competency tools you may have heard them you um, talked about as uh, that are that are in your profession you may find something outside your profession that is applicable to your profession because it's a generalized um, assessment tool and that's fine to use as well so in terms of what do you need to do well first of all you're going to do your search then what you need to do is start stepping your paper out what do I need to do well first I need an introduction and a conclusion that's obvious in the middle I'm going to need a body of the paper okay what goes in that we'll get to that in a minute 
okay now your introduction will guide how the rest of your paper reads so your introduction is a very clear set of signposts or set of map instructions about what the reader will find in the paper so what you're looking to do here is you're looking to start with a sentence about um, or a couple of sentences about um, clinical educational principles of, ed of assessment something like that then you're going to say something to the tune of firstly this paper will identify, discuss and analyse the principles of assessment used in clinical education. Um, you then will move on to say, then uh, the um, role of, the, of formative and um, summative assessment will be discussed and analysed in terms of clinical assessment, clinical education. Uh, um, definitions for keywords will be defined and discussion related to clinical practice will occur. Finally, this paper will critically evaluate the assessment tools that have been provided and will discuss their role to clinical assessment in clinical or to assessment in clinical education. Uh, you might go on to talk about at this point you can leave it there and then move on to identifying so, well, what are the principles of assessment? What are you looking to do? Um, so you're going to talk about that. You then probably will move on to define formative and summative assessment and just then discuss in a separate paragraph principles of formative and summative assessment. So this front part of the paper, you've got an introduction that's a, about a paragraph, then you've got a paragraph on um, uh, discussing the principles of assessment, then you sort of funnel that down to the principles of formative and summative assessment. You may briefly talk about other types of uh, principles as well in that first paragraph. You then, in the second paragraph after the um, introduction, move on to sort of funneling in, into talking about formative and summative assessment, where you would define and discuss them. So you might define them and then in a subsequent paragraph discuss their value in clinical practice. That might take three or four paragraphs. Um, and in fact it might take eight paragraphs for all of that section. But you, for the define and discuss the value and role of formative and summative assessment to clinical education or clinical practice. Um, that might take four and the first section might take four depending on your words um, and remember you've got 2,000 words odd. Then you need a section that evaluates the tools that you've provided and discusses their value um, both formatively and summatively like are they diagnostic and formative tools? Are they uh, have a formative and summative component? How could they be improved? What's great about the tools that you're you're discussing? And then you'll move on to a conclusion. In this conclusion, you should uh, so discuss. You know, you're at the end of the last paragraph before the conclusion should come to you should be saying you know tool A is very good but tool B and C could be improved by adding further formative assessments because as identified by Brown and Jones 2016 students often need uh, several forms of formative assessment prior to undertaking a mastery or summative assessment in clinical education or clinical assessment full stop. You then may work, move into your conclusion and 
have a similar sentence but not the same one obviously and then move on to discuss or you might put that right at the bottom and you you might say firstly uh, this paper discussed the identified discussed and analyzed the principles of clinical assessment it then moved on to defining and discussing um, the principles of formative and summative assessment and so on and so forth so I hope you see what the paper should generally look like Let's look at the marking criteria. Now, can we get it? So, I'll move my little box. All right. Now, criteria run across row and grading runs down. Okay? So, this is an, this is an HD, this is an HD, and so on and so forth. The first two criteria as you can see are worth 40 marks. This first criteria however has two subparts this bit and the second bit and as you know they've come directly out of the task. Okay and two statements have been written to support them and here. Okay so For those of you who are new, it's high distinction, distinction, credit, pass, fail, and then you'll get a total. Um, a pass is when you receive half the marks available for the criteria, um, and it's considered uh, throughout the pass grading um, column that that you have met the criteria but at a basic or rudimentary level okay nothing wrong with that but you have not undertaken a higher order analysis often is the most important thing and it is not um, as comprehensive and as detailed as a high distinction may be and this is demonstrated here so in this first criteria, key issues have been identified um, and discussed in a basic manner. Whereas up here, they've been comprehensive, identified, discussed and analysed. Now, if you're not sure what all those words mean, um, it would be a good time to pause and go and look them up and think about what they mean in education. Google is your friend here. Um, then get to having a look at um, the second part of the criteria summative and formative assessment have been defined at a basic level as well as assessment tools discussed with clinical examples of both but up here there's lots of you can see it's more detailed and undertaken at a deeper level let's look at the next criteria again you can see it past level some critical analysis of the identified tool but maybe mainly discussion and description or description so you're describing what the tool does but you're not analyzing it um, you've got the tools there but that's about it through to your HD where there's comprehensive critical analysis and evaluation about not just the tool but their role and their value in the particular scenario you're discussing. Okay, the last criteria is one of style and presentation uh, referencing and just um, turn it in report. Now at a master's level I uh, would expect to have uh, a base level of um, spelling that is checked, grammar that is dealt with um, and good sentence and paragraph construction. So we are expecting sentences that go places that use that they're compound sentences using joining words but however and that sort of thing. Um, and um, 
that in paragraphs we have about four sentences in each um, in each paragraph uh, at least okay um, they're important now you can use Grammarly if your grammar is not great um, there's nothing wrong with that um, we're asking you to adhere to the prescribed length so um, if you're 2300 nobody's going to jump up and down if you're 5,000 words you will receive um, in this column here which is the fail you'll receive um, a highlighted section and some marks taken off for that you're being asked to provide a Turnitin report and I'll do a video on how to do that next week um, and you're being asked to adhere to the formatting style of APA referencing you can check the library website for how to undertake this if you are unsure similarly you can ask Tim a question in the in the discussion board about it um, with your turned it in report there's a couple of things to note uh, it is used both preemptively by you as an education function so in a formative sense where you are using it to ensure that you are doing the right thing and crediting authors um, and not utilizing other people's works in ways in which you shouldn't it is also being used in a summative way by the lecturers uh, we will also run a report and compare it to what you have we do not use the same um, site uh, we use the same turned in site but in a different assignment site so that we don't return everyone to 100% because clearly we understand how that works um, but if you get say 25% and, and the majority of the highlighted um, material is in your reference list and in your your references in text and that's fine but if you receive a 25% and it is mainly in the words you have written that requires it what that's demonstrating is that you have um, used words that are too close to the original words and need to be rephrased and credited to the original authors appropriately okay you need to set your assignment out using size 12 double spacing um, please don't use a fancy for, um, font um, size 12 times new Roman or Calibri or whatever word defaults to is fine it makes it easiest to read for us um, you must submit as a word document because our marking rubrics are um, created by a word add-in and um, if we can't add it in we actually can't give you good formative feedback uh, you can only receive a, a summative mark in a PDF file so please put up a word file okay now we'll have a question and answer session on this video later in the week it's looking like Thursday uh, Maundy Thursday um, just before Good Friday for those who celebrate um, Easter and I'm talking about Western um, rather than Eastern Orthodox or uh, so so that is this Thursday I believe it's the 29th of um, March let me check my calendar yes and at this point it's looking like a Q&A session around 10 30 or 11 I'll wait to see what you guys are putting on the forum I hope this has been helpful please put your questions up on the forum if you can't go to the meeting um, I will try and record it there has been a problem with online meeting and I've recorded two of these sessions in there today and neither have um, the audio has not worked at either and I've used two different computers in case and two different headsets in case it was the headset uh, I will raise a um, DIT or Division of IT issue tomorrow um, but yes so hopefully this video will see you on your way anyway have a good uh, 
couple of days. Be safe over the weekend if you're traveling and I hope this has been helpful.